Kids Church. Hey Kids Church. Do you know what's poppin'? Do you know what's poppin'? It's Kids Church time. It's Kids Church time. Welcome to Kids Church. Welcome everybody. My name is Teacher Felicia. And I'm Teacher Tracy. And today we're doing part three of Firm, Firm in the, the Faith. Faith. And it's all about how Daniel and his friends stood firm in the faith. Oh wow, that's super cool. Can't wait to hear that story. Mm -hmm. Tell me, Teacher Felicia, mm -hmm. do you dream at night? Uh, I do, but I sometimes don't even remember what I dreamed. Mm, I, I hardly ever remember what I dream. Mm. And if I do remember, they're crazy dreams. They just, <laughs> they, nothing makes sense. Yeah. But you know what? I do believe that God can speak to people through dreams. That is so, so true. God can guide us through dreams. And there's actually a verse about that in the Bible. Yes, hmm. I think that's Acts 2.17. And it says, In the last days, the Holy Spirit will be poured out on our sons and daughters who will prophesy. Hmm. And the young men will dream dreams. Oh no, they won't. They will see visions. The young men will see visions. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and the old men will dream dreams. That's correct. That is so, so, so true. And in, also in the Bible, Daniel gets a chance to actually tell the king what his dream meant. No because way. The king, the king dreamt something yeah. and it was really weird and it was like really awkward and he didn't know what it meant. Yes. And then Daniel told him what it meant. And I bet he trusted God to guide him. That is so, so true. And that's today's bottom line. I will trust God to guide me. Yes. But for now, should we go into a time of worship? Woo! Then I we'll, love worship. Mm, then we'll listen to the story later on. So let's go. Worship time! <laughs> i 
guys, my name is Teacher Felicia and I'm going to teach you guys the memory verse and it says, Be on guard, stand firm in the faith, be courageous, be strong and do everything with love. 1 Corinthians chapter 16 verse 13 to 14. Do you guys think you can say that with me? Okay, let's go. Be on guard, stand firm in the faith, be courageous, be strong, and do everything with love. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13 to 14. Well done! Okay. We're going to do that one more time and I'm going to do the actions while you say the verse. Are you ready? Okay, let's go. Well done, everyone! You guys were absolutely amazing! Don't forget to teach this verse to a friend at school. Okay, well for now, we are going to watch the story. Are you ready? Okay, let's go. Hi there, I'm so excited to share today's story with you because it's about something that all of us do every now and again. It's about dreams. Do you dream at night? Do you dream about fun things or scary things? I love having dreams about flying through the air. And sometimes I have some confusing dreams. And today we're going to hear about dreams that God gives people. So we've been learning about Daniel and his three friends who went all the way to Babylon. And while they were in Babylon, they had to do some important things. In week one, we learned about how they had to make new friends. And you and I can also make new friends, even if they're different to us. We can learn other people's languages. We can learn how to get along with one another. And in week two, last week, we learned about saying no to things that are wrong. We need to know what God wants us to do. And sometimes we need to stand up and say no, even if it looks nice or tastes nice. If it's not right, we need to say no. Today, we're going to hear about what Daniel did when the king had a very confusing dream. Daniel and his three friends had completed their training in Babylon and they were able to speak the language. They were able to be helpful in the palace of the king. They were part of a group called the wise men and advisors. And those were the group of people that the king called when he had difficult decisions to make. One night, King Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. It was not just a regular dream. He knew it was a really important, significant dream. It was really, really clear and it was really confusing because he knew it had something to do with the future, but he didn't understand his dream. And so he knew exactly what to do. He called for his wise men to come and help him. But he called for three kinds of wise men that are not really very helpful. The Bible says that he called for those who claimed to get knowledge by using magic, those who practiced evil magic, and those who studied the heavens. He was hoping that they would be able to explain his dream because they used to look at things that were difficult to understand. And this is what happened when they came to the king. They said to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, may you live forever. Tell us what you dreamed and then we'll explain what it means. And the king replied to them, I have made up my mind. You must tell me what I dreamed and you must tell me what it means. If you don't, I'll have you cut into pieces and I'll have your houses turned into piles of trash. So you tell me what I dreamed, explain it to me and then I'll give you gifts and I'll reward you. I'll give you great honor. So tell me the dream and tell me what it means. Do you think you would be able to tell somebody else what they dreamed? No ways! That's a really difficult thing to ask of somebody. And that's exactly what the wise men told the king. They said to him, 
what you're asking is absolutely impossible. Nobody's ever asked us to do this before. If you'll tell us your dream, then we'll explain it to you. But if you don't tell us your dream, how can we help you? But the king said to them, I don't trust you. I think that you sometimes make stuff up. This time I want to test to make sure that you really do understand these things. You've got to tell me the dream and the meaning of the dream. This is what they replied to him. There is no one on earth who can do what you are asking. No king has ever asked for anything like that. Not even a king as great and mighty as you has asked for it. Those who get knowledge by using magic have never been asked to do what you're asking. Those who study the heavens haven't been asked to do it either. What you are asking is much too hard. No one can tell you what you dreamed except the gods. And they don't live among human beings. Now that made the king very angry and he ordered that all the wise men in Babylon be put to death. I think that what the king was asking was quite a difficult thing to ask, but it was also quite clever because he knew that some of them didn't really know what they were doing. Some of them were trying to fool him and he wanted a test to see whether they really were, were hearing from God. And so he threatened that he would kill all of them unless somebody could give him the answer. And all of the wise men said to him, it's impossible. So the king said, that's fine. Let them all be killed. And then Daniel said something very carefully. He said to Aragach, respectfully and wisely, he said, please, I was not part of the people that the king consulted. Please, would you give me an opportunity to ask my God? And if you will let me have that opportunity, I believe that God will explain the king's dream to him. And so Arioch, the commander, gave Daniel an extra bit of time to do that. The first thing that Daniel did when he was needing to do this nearly impossible task is he went to his three friends who shared his faith. He wanted them to help him. Do you remember what their Hebrew names were? Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Remember they got their names changed to Babylonian names as well. Do you remember what their Babylonian names were? Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. And we're going to hear some more about their story next week. But when Daniel went to them, he went to them because he knew that they had faith in God. They believed that God will guide them. And you and I can trust God to guide us too. God guides us in lots of different ways. He guides us through his word. Sometimes he can guide us through visions and dreams like he did with King Nebuchadnezzar. And so Daniel and his three friends prayed to God and they said, God, you know how important this dream is and you know what you're trying to tell the king. Will you help us to help the king and help the people? And so they prayed and prayed. And then during the night, Daniel had a vision. He saw what the king had dreamed and God explained to him what it meant. Don't you think that's awesome? I know that God guided Daniel and God can guide you and me just like that too when we ask him. And this is what Daniel said. He was so excited when he found out what the king needed to know. And this is what he said about God. Praise the name of God forever and ever for he has all wisdom and power. He controls the course of world events. He removes kings and sets up other kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the scholars. He reveals deep and mysterious things, and he knows what lies hidden in darkness, though he is surrounded by light. And that's the kind of God that we serve too. He is the God who knows all things, and he can show, the th show us the things that we need to know too. He can guide us in all things. So early the next morning, Daniel went to Ariel, the commander of the king's guard, and told him, I've got the answer. I know what the king needs to hear. And Ariel took him to the king. And this is what the Bible says happened. The king asked him, are you able to tell me what I saw in my dream? And can you tell me what it means? Daniel replied, you have asked us to explain a mystery to you. But no wise man can do that. And those who try to figure things out by using magic can't do it either. But 
There is a God in heaven who can explain mysteries. King Nebuchadnezzar, he has shown you what is going to happen. And here is what you dreamed. And just like that, he explained to the king what the king had seen in his dream. He explained about a giant statue and how it had different parts and how each of those parts had a significant meaning about a kingdom that was going to come in the future. And it ends with a final kingdom that is going to have an important value forever. This is what it says. In the time of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom and it will never be destroyed. And we believe that that is the kingdom of God. When Jesus came to earth, he established the kingdom of God on earth and that kingdom will never be destroyed. And so Daniel was able to explain to the king what he had dreamed and also what it meant. He was able to help guide the king to make wise decisions. And in the same way, God can guide you and God can guide me when we ask him to do that. Now, just imagine you were the king. I think the king had given up on anybody being able to do what he'd asked because it was a really difficult thing. And the king realized that this wasn't just something that was made up. This was God, God in heaven, the God who made us. This was God speaking to him and guiding him so that he could be a good king. And it says, the king said to Daniel, I am sure that your God is the greatest God of all. He is the Lord of kings. He explains mysteries. That's why you were able to explain the mystery of my dream. And then the king put Daniel in a position of authority. He gave him many gifts. He made him ruler over the city of Babylon and the towns around it. He put him in charge of all his other wise men. And the king also did what Daniel asked him to do. He appointed Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego to help Daniel govern Babylon and the towns around it. Daniel himself remained in the royal court. And so Daniel was not just appointed as a wise man. He became the one who was in charge of all of the wise men in Babylon at that time. And the reason why he was appointed to such a high position is because he trusted God and he went to God for God to guide him. And when we do that too, God can help us to help other people. When we let God guide us, we can be helpful to other people. We can help them to do the right thing. You're going to get an opportunity to do that with your brothers and sisters at home. You might get a chance to do that at school. And when you need to be in a position of authority, remember to ask God to guide you. Because when we let God guide us, he will show us the right paths to take and we'll be able to be helpful. Now, next week, we're going to learn some more about Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. So this story tells us that Daniel stayed at the king's palace while Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego were ruling in other places of authority. And next week, we're going to hear about what happened when the king made a foolish, foolish new rule. But we'll learn more about that next week. For today, I want you to remember that I will trust God to guide me. Will you make the same decision? Ask God to guide you. Even when it seems impossible, ask God and he will give you the wisdom that you need. Take a moment to pause the video and have a look at these questions about the Bible story.
So, ladies first, Stephanie. Okay, turn to your left a bit. Okay, now move forward. Walk forward, keep walking forward, keep walking forward. Keep walking forward, stop. Move to your right. Move forward again. Keep walking forward, keep walking forward, keep walking forward. Now stop. Go down your knees. <laughs> okay, now go forward. forward. There's a table, go underneath the table. There you go, go on your belly, yes. There you go, wait, there's a... <laughs> there's a pole. Now go to your right a bit. There you go. Now go underneath, keep going, keep going. Keep going. Keep going, you're almost at the table. Almost, almost. There you go. Now go, okay, go, go, stand up again. Okay, now walk forward. Okay, wait, just stop. Go left, go right a bit. Go right again. Okay, now walk forward again. Stop, right again. Just your body right, there you go. And then there's a pole there. Go over the thing, the, the string thing. There you go. Well done! Now walk forward a bit. There's a chair in front of you. I want you to, to climb over it. There's the chair. Climb over it. There you go. Now, I want you to go over the table. There's a table in front of you. There you go. Now, go over the table. Climb over the table. Over. Go. There you go. Oh, wait, you can, yeah, you can go on the table. Okay. Now, walk forward. There's two chairs in front of you. Go on the chair. Step on the chair. On the chair, there's the other chair. Okay, and then go to your right. Right, no, 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 don't jump, don't jump, don't jump. Just step on your right. There you go, now walk forward. Keep walking. Well done, yay! Did you see that when you listen to the right voice and you obey that right, right voice, you find yourself being able to overcome certain obstacles that you find along the way, like we saw here today. But when you listen to the opposite voice, you could find yourself in sticky situations that could be quite rough and dirty, as we can see. That's why we should always, always listen to God's voice 
as he guides us and trust that God will guide us into the right path to overcome obstacles and to find ourselves happy like we saw with Steffi. Okay, so I think we should answer a few questions, Jordan. Are you ready? Okay, let's go answer a few questions and see how we can trust God to guide us with them. Bye! <laughs> Hey kids, I really hope that you enjoyed that. Don't forget to ask your parents to like, subscribe and follow us and turn on the post notifications to keep up to date with the latest content just for you. And I encourage you this week, sit around the dinner table and tell your parents what you learned and even pray about it with them. If you'd like to contact us or message us, you can follow us on Instagram and Facebook and DM us. You can even get your parents to visit our website or WhatsApp us on our WhatsApp line. Have a wonderful week and we'll see you next week. Stay connected.